both actually started off from uh, collaboration to uh, the Office of Naval Research in the United States and the AUVSI. Um, they gave us the bottom half of the boat for a competition uh, called Maritime Robotex. That was held in Singapore last year. And it's a joint collaboration between ourselves and the University of Tasmania, Australian Maritime College, to, to develop an autonomous boat where the, where the boat actually had to maneuver around the course by itself, avoid obstacles, detect a finger. The competition is done for the students. Uh, we have several undergraduate students taking part in building parts for the boat each year and postgrads, and then we take some of them to the competition site. We went on to develop the boat further for envir environmental sensing applications. So we're going to be using it shortly to get a maps of the seabed. The value is that you'd like to put the boat to do useful work in areas where you wouldn't go yourself. So um, if you have um, dangerous waters or, or rough seas, you wouldn't want to go there. Right? You still have to be able to monitor it. Um, for a research scientist, if they're monitoring the environment, most of the time they're, they're uh, waiting for the weather to be right. In this case, you can send the boat out even in quite reasonably rough seas and get it to do the, the sensing for you, come back again, and you've got nobody, put nobody at risk. There are boats out there that can already do quite a number of applications. The big problem is getting governments uh, to allow boats, to, autonomous boats, to go out independently, uh, where you don't have somebody supervising them. Uh, currently, we have to operate them in line of sight. Uh, the legislation is still not there yet to allow it to go off and into the high seas by itself.